Okie dokie. So uh, my philosophy is to take two um, tables and basically make them into a platform right here. So those are six foot uh, straight tables uh, that I bought at Lowe's. And uh, right now what I'm doing is I'm removing uh, basically the frame out of it, uh, unscrewing that. And uh, I need to see how flimsy the table is all by itself. Uh, if it's super duper flimsy, um, I'll need to figure out a way how to basically chop the legs off and remove this to basically, you know, keep the rigidity. But um, so in my icrometer, um, I spot this is probably around six inches or thereabouts, maybe a little bit less. So I think if I could just chop it like thereabouts on both ends, that should fit um, like this in there. Uh, for time being, I'm just doing exploratory surgery on one of the tables uh, to see what I could do. I know I have to cut the table, it's just a question of where. And based on how flimsy the table is without this whole metal exercise, um, I'm not going to be putting tons of weight in there, but I certainly don't want the table to sag either. Um, so we'll see. All right, well, um, here's some interesting little factoids about this project. So allegedly this table is capable of handling hundreds of pounds of weight. Um, once you remove this metal frame from underneath of it, it becomes uh, flimsy. So, uh, see this? So obviously this uh, frame provides rigidity to it. However, how do you go about doing that? So, um, to my surprise, uh, this whole thing is basically not held together with anything other than just going into the grooves so those bits and bobs over here um basically is what uh provides ready uh, so what i need to do is i need to chop this over here and chop that over there and then chop this over here so basically this bar is going back in there and so is this so that when i put everything together the legs are not going to uh, interfere with anything because they're gonna be gone. And this table will uh, get its groove back. So um, the way I measured, I guess my icrometer is uh, halfway decent. So basically from the edge of this to roughly about here is about six inches. So this being a six foot table and the bed being five foot, why basically I need to chop this off on both sides. So this also means that in terms of um, the bed, I think I need to chop this much out of it um, on both sides. So we're gonna see. All right, so I've been measuring this thing uh, time and time again. Um, here's the weird kind of hitching the giddy up. Technically speaking, the space from the bottom of this to the bottom of the other side is 62, right? Now I have to make this whole thing removable and I also have to slide this in. So, um, there's also inconvenience of the bottom portion being deeper than that and the fact that i have to remove this table every once in a while um i decided to go with 61 inches so 72 minus 61 divided by half uh, basically i'm chopping um five and a half inches from one side and five and a half inches off the other side and uh i may even chop an additional half of inch uh we shall see my goal for time being is to measure this and cut and remeasure it. Um, 
always double check your measurements. I was off by a smidgen. So um, check, check and check. So um, my target is to do the same kind of thing on the other side. Uh, go over there to the uh, to where my saw is, chop, chop and uh, try and uh, dry fit this thing in here. So the other thing to worry about would be those, but I'm gonna worry about them after I make my cuts proper. All right, so I guess at this point, there is no turning back, is there? Uh, one of the perks of living in Florida, as you might imagine, uh, it's always flip-flops. And uh, doing these kinds of projects while staring at all this beautiful stuff. Um, if you ever wondered what's inside those tables, so this is a salad table, okay? They have two different kinds. They have the foldable table, which is a uh, similar design, but it falls in the middle and then there's the salad. So after playing with it uh, like a fool in Lowe's with everybody uh, wondering what the hell is this guy doing? I was, uh, let me just put it this way. I was testing, testing it. Cause my goal was to make sure it doesn't sag and it was doing this number so ultimately that's the reason why I decided to go with a flat table so um, using typical saw obviously shavings go all over the place um, but yeah look at this I wonder if this could be repurposed for something like a little shelf or something um, I'm not gonna throw them out quite yet you never know boom about that so but yes the goal is to chop on the other end as well and uh, dry fit it and see if it uh, fits in there fingers crossed all right it's now and ever So, like I was mentioning in the previous videos, or previous video, the access on the side, which is where I'm at on the other side, is just wonderful. Ooh, look at that. All right. Yeah, let me grab the camera. So, to get you an idea, it fits there perfectly. Now, there is a little bit of play in there. Uh, always wear protection. Um, there is a little bit of play in terms of how this table moves, but I'm actually quite happy that I'm, see, I'm able to still remove it and it's going to sit there uh, nicely. So, if you notice, Probably in the grand scheme of things, this isn't that big of a deal. Um, but you never know. Uh, there is a however faint possibility that I might actually catch a uh, snooze in here every once in a while. So I need to make sure that this is sturdy. So my next goal is now that I've actually cut it is to number one, cut the other table and number two, uh, figure out what to do about this frame well uh, the damage isn't that bad I was afraid that I might have to cut it really close to this but uh, this is actually kind of good it means that oh, even when I do chop it well I mean I will chop it but I'm gonna leave uh, quite a bit of meat on the metal piece so I'm gonna offset it uh, basically on this and here and also in there as well so the bar is staying which is really good that means i'm gonna have a rigid uh table and uh yeah 
Well, I'm not a big fan of power tools, uh, but I keep using them. And sometimes you just need the right tool for the job, so this is the right tool for the job. The goal of this exercise, obviously, is to uh, chop the ends off. And having proper tools makes this job so much easier. So here, you can see the difference between before and after. All right, so uh, I had a quick chat with my neighbor. Uh, he advised me to keep the legs off the table uh, in there. Uh, I ran into other difficulties. Uh, so basically legs are there to provide rigidity. Um, ran into issues. I uh, wanted to use uh, conduit clamps uh, to hold the legs. I uh, wanted to use the uh, air ducting uh, straps. And I found out that on the underside of this this plastic is so soft that uh, every screw is literally falling out as soon as you put it in um not cool not cool um accidentally poked a couple of holes in process uh over there there's another one over there um is what it is i suppose but so i got it in here as you see, that sucker is uh, in there. So the obvious benefit of having a platform is that it separates the bottom from the top, provides additional security. Like for example, if you were to put stuff on the bottom, uh, nobody would know, right? Likewise, uh, you could actually sleep in here on the top. And uh, that's how I used to uh, sleep in camp for a lot of years. Uh, in my uh, Toyota Tacoma so and again you know this is removable with uh, a little bit of persuasion um, but this should be sturdy enough so once you start closing uh, windows and everything else it will be just right uh, the problem is um, when I first bought my uh, uh, second generation Tacoma uh, which was 2008 it had a five foot bed right and so naturally you, you can imagine if you're uh, taller than five foot uh, the only way you could sleep was diagonally uh, so that got old I uh, purchased uh, 2016 lawn bed specifically so that um, I didn't have to sleep diagonally and ironically for entire ownership of the uh, third gen Tacoma I've never once slept in the back of it <laughs> so now I have a platform again and this is a Jeep Gladiator and it looks like I'm gonna be doing the whole diagonal exercise um, there's just no other way to uh, really sleep in here and another thing to consider is once you put a mattress here or anything else um, it just gets overly complicated there's not enough space here to begin with so uh you could blow up a mattress which would be here and then you there's just not enough space 
So, but for emergency use only and those once in a lifetime, I need to sleep for the night kind of deals, this would be a perfect place to. Um, the great irony of a camper shell, you can't really camp under your camper shell um, while utilizing your truck as a actual truck. Um, so every once in a while you see one of those old Dodge or uh, Ford or Chevy trucks with like those really, really tall uh, camper shells, like that, that's like twice as tall as this. And you're like, what, why, why would somebody, well, there you have it, that's the reason why. So uh, let me go ahead and climb in and uh, show you what's the deal, yo. Mm, come on, camera. Okay. Uh, sure about camera shape. All right, let's try this. Just to show you that it is indeed possible. Although uncomfortable. And again, I didn't get this so I could sleep on it. Uh, but if I wanted to, this is how you could, theoretically speaking. There you have it. So. This is how I used to sleep for a very long time, like diagonally like this. So, um, and the benefit uh, of having screens over here, oh, sorry about camera shake, let me reposition this, is that you could actually close your windows and have this whole area ventilated. So um, this is, as you might imagine, an intimate arrangement uh to get you an idea this is it so if you have a pillow you're more like there is but uh, is what it is i suppose <laughs> um in theory if you had to sleep this is how you would do it i'm not saying this is comfortable but beggars can be picky i suppose Oh, another thing is, for additional ventilation, you can always open this window as well, over here. I could totally see myself going to like a uh, white rim of Moab, and instead of dealing with the whole rooftop tent or anything else, you just kind of doopy doop, uh, just for the night. Uh, although white rim trail is so long, I don't know if I'll actually ever finish it entirely. Because um, everything that you need to see is basically accessible on both ends, so. There you go. So, as I'm moving about here, um, this platform, whoop, plastic shavings, uh, this platform is sturdy. All right, so for uh, purposes of how I've uh, tucked the legs in, um, you know, I'm not super duper thrilled. Uh, this is just a temporary measure while I'm testing this. More than likely, I'll figure out a way how to properly anchor it. But for time being, I put some zip ties right there. As you see, they're already sagging uh, simply because legs are uh, heavy. Um, you know, I, I wonder just how much stability and rigidity, uh, those legs actually provide. Uh, the problem is if I was to remove, like chop them off, it's a one way exercise. I don't have, like, there's no backing out of it. So, I don't know. For time being, I'm just gonna keep it as is. Uh, the benefit, as you see, I have tons of space on the bottom, so you could store. Um, let me see. So, 
So this is uh, a little less than 18 because of, I got some grooves in there on the bottom. So about 18 inches tall. And then this. Come on. I'm guessing about 19, maybe, thereabouts. So about equal space here and there. Um, yes, I've lost about the A much, but whatever. And uh, so let me show you in terms of security, the benefit of having something like this. This is all that people will see. Right? Especially if you close the rest of this off. So, oh, uh, in case you ever wonder, um, this over here is uh, melted plastic as I was recovering from uh, Elephant Hill in Moab. And so for buying the cheapest, uh, ramps this is about all of the damage they're still tough as nails all right so doing this live so you know that there's no hanky panky Back in the day, when I used to scuba dive, uh, having a platform like that allowed me to have all of my wet scuba gear and everything on the bottom. And uh, it will all drain out and everything. There we go. Look at that. There's still even a little bit of space in there. And then we close this. There you go. How about that? All right, so if somebody wants to come up here and look through the glass, right, this is what they see. Pretty cool, huh?